Folks, I am coming to you from my remote workshop in lovely Boston, Maryland, uh, to show you the Flying Cinema X24 quadcopter frame. Now, you may know Flying Cinema from their Cinetank line of quadcopters, uh, which are some larger quadcopters, more in the, say, 400 uh, millimeter size, designed for aerial photography. Uh, I guess someone at Flying Cinema decided that quadcopter racing and mini quad racing and drone racing, keyword search, drone racing, drone racing was the next big thing. And so they built a X frame mini quad. This is the X24 frame. That uh, means it's 240 millimeters motor to motor, or at least if it doesn't mean that, then it really ought to. And it is an X style base similar to the Alien. The really interesting thing about this frame is that, unlike most frames, it doesn't have horizontal plates, but it has vertical plates. And the top of the frame attaches to the bottom via these right angle mounts right here. And you can get a better look at them in the assembly video that I'm also going to put up to go along with this one. But essentially, you've got these screws right here, here, and two of them on the other side and this whole section lifts off. Now that's very interesting for a number of reasons, but of course one of them is that it, it, it seems like it should make maintenance of the copter a lot simpler. Now, whenever I wanna maintain my QAVR, I have to take six screws out, and then I have to lift the top plate off, and then uh, everything sort of falls apart, right? The camera, the camera mount comes out, I have to re reset the camera mount, it's a little bit of a hassle. Whereas with this one, the screws will come out. In fact, let's just do it, let's just do it here. two, three, and here's the last one. And four, and now it just lifts off like so. Now, from a maintenance perspective, it seems like that offers a lot of advantages. Because, of course, you can have your, your receiver and your camera and your video transmitter here in this top section, and it can just lift right off. Maybe you have a few wires going down to your flight controller, who knows. But it'll lift right off, it'll set aside, you can work on your flight controller, you can work on your ESCs, your PDB, as need be. When you're done, it goes back down, four screws, and you're good to go. Now, that certainly seems like it has a lot to offer. If we look at the top plate design, there's a recessed section here where the battery sits in, and that is also really nice. Uh, I like the fact that the battery is retained in the standoffs and the side plates. I, I'm always struggling with how to keep my battery on top of my copter. I've got tried Velcro, I've tried neoprene, I've tried all sorts of things, and some things work better than others. But few things seem to work consistently. They wear out, um, the battery starts flying off in a crash, it's no good. Uh, this uses the carbon fiber plates and the standoffs. So if the frame is intact, then the battery should stay in place. Now this frame is supposedly able to take up to an 1800 milliamp hour battery, at least that's what the website says. I personally am a little skeptical of that claim and it looks like we're at about um, three centimeters, I would say. Inches, not centimeters, three inches. So I'm skeptical that an 1800 would fit in there. I think you're gonna run this with around a 1300 or a 1500, and really that's an optimal size for a copter like this anyway, in my opinion. You certainly could just set the base of the 1800 here and let it hang off the back. Yeah, who wants to do that? I don't know. The top part of the frame is angled here, and that's, of course, for mounting. Well, they show it in all their product shots with a GoPro session. And everybody likes to put the GoPro session in their product shots because it's a nice small camera and it makes the product look really good. Uh, but if you're, if you're running this with a GoPro or a Yi, you're going to end up with a situation like this. And you can see that that's preset to a certain angle. So, of course, you're going to need to modify that angle somehow if you have an ad additional tilt. And if you're thinking of running something like a run cam, I don't think that's going to fit very well. I could be wrong, but it looks like the run camera Mobius would kind of extend over here into the battery portion and, and, and get in the way. And uh, frankly, I think that we may run into a similar problem here that I run into on my QAVR, and that is that if you run 
with a lot of up tilt, it starts to get pretty tough to fit the battery on. Although, the fact that this is recessed here, the battery actually sits down maybe a, a half a centimeter or so, is going to help give you a little more clearance here to get it to fit. So that's nice. The camera mount bracket for the FPV camera is also really clever. I really dig it. One of the biggest things I've had to struggle with uh, in this hobby since I got into FPV is mounting your FPV camera in a way that it'll hold its angle, be easy to adjust, uh, but not come, not come loose in a crash. And uh, this, you can see, there are cutouts here and there is a camera plate here that your FPV camera mounts on. And then of course as you assemble the top part of the frame you just select which of these cutouts you want and so this is zero degrees and I haven't looked in the manual because I'm a terrible reviewer but I would guess this is it's a few degrees maybe it's 15 maybe it's 0, 15, 30, oh we have 45, 60 that seems plausible I'm sure I could look that up I'm sure you could look it up too so, so then you're thinking, well, yeah, but I don't use a board camera, Joshua. I don't use a board camera. I use like a, a HS1177 or a Runcam Swift. Well, you actually unscrew the lens out of the camera. Now, this means you're going to need to refocus your camera, so that's annoying. But, you know, you're building a copter. Suck it up. And then this screws down in like so, well, just easy peasy, just a piece of cake to do. Two seconds and you're done. That is a pretty clever idea. Now I do wonder whether as you crash or whatever, this may turn sideways or something. It depends on how securely that locking ring locks. Also, it does seem like mounting your camera this way might increase the odds that your lens will come out of focus. So I don't know if I'm 100% sold on this, but it is really clever and, and it's just nifty. Now another thing that I think is really cool about this frame is this little cutout here. And there's another one on the other side. When I first saw those, I thought, what is that for? Because it's not obvious that it's that, like this is obviously a cutout for your video transmitter, right? Obviously. But what is this thing? And the answer is that it is for your antenna. Your antenna passes through this little cutout here, this U-shaped cutout, and a zip tie goes through here, and the zip tie sticks out and up like so, and your antenna will uh, heat shrink to the zip tie. Now, heat shrinking your antenna to a zip tie is a very, very common way of protecting your antennas, but usually you just find some spot on the frame, like here, for example, and you stick it there. And the problem with that, number one, is that the antenna is constantly rubbing against the frame as it moves. The zip tie is constantly moving. And so this the sharp edge here can cut into the antenna and the zip tie is moving. So the antenna is never in the same place. It's shifting, it's falling. This, this somebody actually thought, hey, we're gonna do what everybody does anyway. We're gonna make it easy for them to do it right. And there's one up here on the front and there's actually one here on the back as well, depending on where you mount your receiver and where you like to run your antennas. So very clever, very smart design. I'm a big fan of this decision as well. The frame comes with a PDB. It is a pretty basic PDB in that it does not have 5 volt, 12 volt regulator or anything like that. It does have spots for a Pololu though, uh, spots here for a 5 volt regulator and then for an auxiliary regulator, which presumably would be 12 volts, although Suppose, I guess you could have it be whatever you want. If you want to, of course, you can do what I like to do and put the RROSD Pro from Red Rotor on there and get the OSD and the PDB together. If you're thinking about getting this frame and cost is one of your considerations, you do need to factor in that you're going to spend another 5 or $7 on a Pololu regulator or maybe something cheaper if you go on eBay or something like that. And if you need two outputs, if you need both 5 and 12 volts, well, you may end up needing two regulators, so that does add a little bit to the cost of the frame, although it's probably not a deal breaker for many people. As far as the flight characteristics of the frame, well, I'm going to finish this build, and I'm actually going to fly it. I have all the parts I need, I just need the time to do it, so that's coming. In some sense, I, I've always said that these X-style frames probably don't fly too dramatically different from each other. Now, the motor layout is pretty consistent. Now, this is a 240. Whereas the one I fly currently, the QAVR, is closer to a 210 or a 220. And I, I am a firm believer that smaller motor-to-motor -motor distance makes for a better handling copter. Uh, it makes for especially better yaw performance, but it makes the copter a little more nimble on all the axes just because the weight is more centralized. 
So we may feel some small difference in this copter's handling because the motors are further apart. But what's unique about this copter is the top part of the frame. And uh, I do wonder how much these vertical walls are going to affect the copter's handling. And what I mean by that is, you know, there was a trend a little while back of people putting uh, side plates, side walls on their mini quads. I uh, heard from some people who flew that way that it had a sort of a rudder effect on the copter in the air. In other words, if you were flying and you were not facing the direction you were going, which let's face it, we have we have mini quads that can turn and roll any direction we want. So oftentimes you'll be flying and maybe you're sliding sideways, it would cause the copter to want to face in the direction it was going and, and you'd have to actively fight with the yaw axis to prevent that. Or maybe you had to just raise the eye gain a little bit. I'll definitely be paying attention to see if that manifests on this copter when I finally get it into the air. I have to point out that I've also noticed that there are cutouts here and I have to wonder if that's for a battery strap for a person who wants to elect to bottom mount their battery. It certainly does look like you could do that. Another thing that I like about this frame is that the front is designed so wide and smooth it really feels like that's going to absorb an impact very well in a front end collision. Uh, it's a very strong boxed in front. That's where most of the force is going to be in a crash. And this, this design with not a lot of sharp edges, I really like that a lot. I think that's got a lot of potential to protect the FPV camera very well and keep the whole frame strong in a crash. Well, folks, that's it. That's your first look at the Flying Cinema X24. I'm going to finish building this frame, and then I'm going to get it up in the air, and I'll give you guys a flight review after that. But here's your first look. Until then, happy flying.